Welcome back to the KR Daily Transmission. For those of you who are just tuning in for the first time to my channel, my name is Kyra and I am the author of The Sophia Code. And we are <clears throat> journeying in the month of April through the topic of leadership and the teachings in The Sophia Code connected to leadership. So um, good morning, Jade. <laughs> um, and the the excuse me, the Ascended Master Mentor that we will be focusing upon leading up to our April 13th Magdalene Rising Ceremony is, of course, Mary Magdalene, Ascended Master Jesus, and the entire Order of Magdalena. Um, <laughs> you may hear some of the birds singing, and there's also this rooster that likes to like tune in to these lives. So <laughs> if you have a name for the rooster, um, I'm looking for a good name for this rooster in my neighbor's yard. <laughs> good morning. And of course, feel free to share your name in the chat or in the video comment feed and where you're tuning in live from or hi, Kelly. And if you're watching uh, on the replay, feel free to introduce yourself in the comment feed. We love to hear from you. We love to, um, yeah, we just love to learn more about you. Jennifer's running in. I'm so happy to announce that I'll be joining you in Austin, Texas in May. Yeah! Get your cowgirl on. I'm so excited you're going to be joining us, Jennifer. Uh, I, what Jennifer is referring to is our Sovereign Spiritual Leadership Immersive that's happening uh, May 2nd through the 4th, which with an optional um, prosperity ceremony that you can join us for on uh, May 5th. We're getting soup excited for Austin. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Wow, it's so beautiful to see everyone popping under the live feed. And uh, yeah, it, we actually just met with a beautiful crew of leaders in Austin on Friday virtually. And it was so touching for me to meet um, some of the boots on the ground light workers in Austin and um, just the incredible work that they're up to there. And um, so looking forward to our co-creation, both with our community and the, commu and the leadership community in Austin coming together. If you'd like to learn more about this extraordinary opportunity to mentor with me live, to step up to the mic with me live, um, feel free to check out the Austin Sovereign Spiritual Leadership Immersive on my website at kyra.com. And that link is also in the chat. And if you have any questions about attending in Austin, you can reach out to my team angels who are happy to get on the phone with you and uh, have a free consultation with you. So I'm really stoked about <laughs> this upcoming Magdalene Rising ceremony that's happening on April 13th, which is very, very affordable. It's an online ceremony. And that is, I was looking at the astrology of where this lines up with this Jupiter-Neptune conjunction, and it's we're right in that window of that power spot. So not only are we doing this extraordinary Magdalene Rising ceremony with the entire order of Magdalena, but we just intuitively aligned it without us even planning it um, with this really amazing astrological conjunction that hasn't happened since I think like the 1850s. Um, and it's, it's an astrological alignment that deeply invokes your direct connection to source, creative genius, um, any form of leadership connected to the spiritual arts, healings and spiritual spirituality in the healing sciences, excuse me, it's a little early for me. Um, and it's just been a really intense morning at the ground running and haven't fully had a full cup of caffeine. <laughs> anyway, so this is, um, this is an exciting time. And with this new moon in Aries, what's so cool is that oh, I think this is the first time in like a year and a half or two years where all the planets are going direct. There's nothing in retrograde, at least for like a month. So this journey in April connected to leadership, the stars and the planets are aligning for us to focus on your leadership without interruption. So the usual obstructions and resistances that you may feel universally um, that are testing 
uh, your resolve to lead are actually lifting this month <laughs> while we've already planned this journey to focus upon leadership, to focus upon your divine purpose and supporting you in that journey with these Magdalene rising teachings. So this is so cool, um, just how everything's lining up. And it's so great to see everyone joining us live. So today I'm going to read a passage from Mary Magdalene's chapter that's very dear to my heart. And then we're going to jump over to some um, content from the Stargate 2 curriculum, which is uh, originally it was called the Elegant Equation of Divine Feminine Christ Leadership. There are so many divine feminine Christ teachings in this curriculum. This curriculum was completely channeled. Um, of course, the videos are, but there's multiple, there's at least 12 PDFs, I think even more than that, of new channel content that one day I will be editing into a book. It's just been a little bit time consuming with all the other projects that we've had to complete, but it's, it's, it was the most recently channeled content post publication of the Sophia Code. And it took an enormous amount of um, willingness and perseverance on my part to write this content. And the reason for that is because it was asking me to talk about my lifetime of leadership. It was asking me to talk about the inner world of what it means to step forward and be seen and how vulnerable that has felt for me for my entire life. And it actually asked for me to channel these archetypes uh, that are actually a trinity of divine feminine Christ leadership archetypes that work together as one, even though very often we have a proclivity towards a single archetype. And these archetypes are the creatrix, the teacher, and the healer. And there are sub -ar archetypes with each of those archetypes. But if you understand that these three archetypes, the teacher, the healer, and the creatrix are constantly interdependently attempting to work together as one within your consciousness, you become aware of all the different ways that your higher self is guiding and leading you to fulfill your divine purpose, to step forward and be seen in your gifts and your talents. And how they and each archetype informs the other about what's happening in your next step. So I'm going to share some insight from this very powerful channel curriculum that's connected to leadership. It is our first leadership program that was channeled right before our Sophia Circle Leadership Certification Program, which is a Maha Leadership Training Program. So Let's begin by invoking Mary Magdalene together. It's Monday. It's a new moon. It's a new week. It's a new month. And it is game on with that fiery energy leading up to the fire dragon teachings in Austin, the fire dragon teachings that we're going to be receiving in the Magdalene rising ceremony. And I'm just feeling really good today. And I hope you are too. So let's begin with the Sophia Code on page... 194. And this section is entitled Mary Magdalene prepares for her mission. And um, I'm going to begin with paragraph one, two, three, four, paragraph five, if you'd like to join me reading the Sophia Code out loud. I'm celebrating each and every one of you, all of these beautiful comments. Welcome back <laughs> to your New Moon Monday. And um, yeah, and this is actually the beginning of the astrological new year. So happy new year uh, as far as that goes as well. Okay, bottom of page 194. These are the words of Mary Magdalene. And so Mary, Mary Magdalene is sharing her experience about how she was preparing for her leadership, her divine purpose. And Mary Magdalene shares, I often spent as much time as I was permitted to directly mentor with Mother Mary as a primary teacher, for we shared a similar background in our Egyptian mystery school training we would often sit together in her rose garden 
Imagine that, hanging out with Mother Mary in her rose garden. You, Mary Magdalene, and Mother Mary, you can do that in meditation. Mary would remind me that I was a whole rose in the presence of both my petals and thorns, and to never feel ashamed of my thorns. As an overlighting mentor for my development, Mary could see that I was a natural spiritual revolutionary longing to serve my divine purpose. She also knew that it would require a sophisticated set of skills in order for me to safely speak my truth as a public female leader. These skills included mastering the high magi arts, oracular oration, and embodying an invincible divine love. My personal light would have to be bright enough to blind those who would harm me and bright enough to cast a path for those terrified to seek out my help. I also needed to master the assertion of my personal sovereignty as both a woman and as a teacher within the interdependent collaborative efforts of a community working together as the one body of Sophia Christ. Mother Mary took me under her wing as her own daughter to initiate my awareness into these highly sophisticated nuances of divine feminine Christ leadership. That's so powerful. Those three paragraphs alone are, are it's like mind blowing. Uh, the training that Mary Magdalene received directly from Mother Mary to step into these divine feminine Christ principles within her that could transcend the extreme times that she was living in so that she could serve as a public leader, regardless of all oppression, um, all judgment, and even the danger of leading at her time. So it's like when we are looking to the Magdalene's to mentor us in our spiritual leadership, and by the way, any leadership, because we as a platform believe that that leadership is needed in every field of interest, um, every 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 inter intersecting industry that makes our world go round requires leaders that are embodying Christ consciousness. Leadership is service. So however you are showing up to serve the hearts, minds, the, the evolution of others, we consider that leadership and um so I just want to preface, you know, preface that be, or even remind us that like you can be leading in any capacity in your life. It, it's about being seen as a resource of support and awakening for others. And so in this, um, what are we what are we receiving from these chat from these paragraphs in the Sophia Code? Mary Magdalene took the time to prepare for her ministry. Mary Magdalene took the time to practice these nuances of divine feminine Christ leadership, which include cult cultivating her energy. It included learning how to sit in the seat of her power. It included learning how to confidently own uh, her vision, her mission, her perspective, how to negotiate ego structures through the articulation of divine love. She had to learn how to walk with a grace and a fierce grace where the power and the presence of her diamond light could pierce the darkness uh, that included the confusion and the judgment of others with a brilliance that was so bright it went straight into their hearts and would confuse their ego structures so that they could actually receive the medicine of uh, these divine feminine principles that desperately wanted to be awakened uh, within the people that were resisting Mary Magdalene the most. And we have so much to learn from Magdalene about how to serve in these times that are filled with censorship and propaganda and uh, cancel culture and just there are so many attempts to thwart us from our sovereign spiritual leadership, from our sovereign leadership, from from the creative genius that already exists within us. There are so many distractions that want to keep us small when the truth of the matter is, is that you are you are a dragon sized soul. You are unlimited in your capacity to shine um, 
your divine truth in this world, just as Mary Magdalene and all the Mar Magdalene's have, you know, stepped up to shine their light and to share their message and to make a significant impact in the world. You know, even if someone's life ended the way that Joan of Arc's life ended, which she was betrayed by the very monarchy that she served, the reality is, is she completed her mission. The radiance of her divine embodiment fulfilled the angelic mission for which she was sent. And even in the way that her life was ended, you know, ironically, years later, she was um, she was lifted up and honored for the incredible oracular leadership that she embodied, um, <laughs> where all of the judgments against her were reversed. The irony, if you really want to know the irony of why Joan was, you know, the reasoning, the logic behind her being burned at the stake was that she refused to take off her armor. Isn't that interesting? She refused to take off the male armor that was given to her to protect her in life when she was imprisoned um, by the British. And in that refusal to take off that which was protecting her, uh, to stand in that balance of the divine masculine and the divine feminine within her, uh, this was their logical reasoning for why she was uh, a sinner and should be burnt at the stake, which we all know is absolutely ludicrous and ridiculous. Um, but the point being is like that radiance that Joan embodied as a Magdalene set an entire country free. It turned them back to their sovereignty uh, at a very pivotal moment where their country was about to be handed over to another empire. And so what do we take away from that in our leadership? Like how many sophisticated nuances of divine feminine Christ leadership did Joan have to embody at that time? balanced with the divine masculine to stand in her sovereignty. It's like she was fighting for the sovereignty of her nation. We as light workers, as light workers connected to the order of Magdalena, connected to Mary Magdalene, we are standing up for the sacred sovereignty of all of humanity, the sovereignty of this planet, the sovereignty of our species. That's extraordinary. That's a huge leap to go from the sovereignty of a country to the sovereignty of a planet. But that's just the kind of angels that we are. And that's just the kind of angelic mission that we came here to embody in this lifetime. And we are doing it. Every time you focus upon yourself, your divine purpose, uh, choosing to succeed and thrive in spite of these crazy times that we are living in, you are choosing to embody that sovereign resonance that all of humanity is being invited, uh, <laughs> invoked, better word, uh, to embody for, the, for our future, for our future generations. So I want to head over to these teachings from the Stargate 2 curriculum. I have this PDF on my phone. And so much of this curriculum was actually inspired by two key code mentors that were relentless with me. They wouldn't let it go. Uh, Mother Mary and Isis. And, I, you know, I want to share with y'all that leadership is always bringing me to my vulnerable edges. Like, I hope you know that. Like, when I'm being asked to channel something new, the, the resistances that come up within me, like, I don't I don't get out of that feeling just because I've, I've been channeling my whole life. Like, I have a very powerful... Um, vulnerable human journey with all of this channeling work in my leadership every day. And, you know, when I was asked to channel the Stargate 2 curriculum, I wanted to be like, really? Are you serious? I just finished the Sophia code. Like I'm exhausted. I put everything in it. Like all <laughs> you want me to keep leading in this way? <laughs> like, this is hard. Like, I don't, I don't want to talk about myself. How about we just channel something else about you? And Mother Mary was like, no, this content is so important because there is such a deep need for spiritual leadership um, coming over the next 10 years that if we don't have these curriculums um, channeled, people won't have the tools that they need to understand how vulnerable the journey of leadership really is. So every time I'd go to my Mother Mary altar, she'd be like, please sit down and work on this content. And then I'd turn to my ISIS altar and be like, ISIS, I don't want to. And ISIS would be like, 
yeah, but you got to go back to the Mother Mary altar and keep having this conversation with Mother Mary. It was kind of hilarious. And um, finally, I just gave in and, and, um, and really showed up. And so I want you to know that resistance and, um, you know, the, the uncomfortable, vulnerable feelings that arise when you step into the archetype of the creatrix, the teacher, the healer, in any form of leadership. These are archetypal energies that are going to invoke those past life fears of like, if you've been burnt at the stake or you've been uh, persecuted or oppressed or lost your family or, or your community in other lifetimes for speaking up, sharing new teachings, uh, leading the way for your community and for your clients um, in other lifetimes or even in this lifetime where you've been persecuted for. It's like, it's fair and perfectly reasonable to feel that resistance. And this is why we mentor with the Ascended Masters why we mentor with the Ascended Masters, because we need our friends in high places. We need that, their, their angelic wings and their very powerful sovereign hearts to support us. We all need to be in a community of leaders. The Ascended Masters are a part of our community of leaders that helps us to stay true and to stay strong and to stay focused on those next steps of our divine purpose. So Mother Mary was a big part of... Um, of, of channeling this content in the Stargate 2 curriculum. And there's two archetypes of shadow archetypes that we talk about, the diva and the orphan. And the diva and the orphan represent two archetypes that the ego structure employs for us to remain separated from our inner calling to leadership. So the the diva arena, the Stargate 2 curriculum shares that your ego special forces unit, we talk about the ego structure as having its own army of soldiers, and your ego's special forces unit will strate strategically aggrandize your personal importance in the creation process to the point of convincing you that you don't need to create anything at all. So, for example, <laughs> um, the, there's some of these bullet points are like, no one will get my creative genius. So why bother creating X, Y, Z? Why bother writing that book? Why bother starting that program? Why bother, you know, taking that training to uplevel my career? Or I've already created blank and this was my lifetime contribution. So now I'm done, right? That could have been that moment. Like, ah, I wrote the Sophia code. So now I'm done. I don't need to do anything. Um, Oh, how about this one? Others will rip off my brilliant ideas, so why bother creating any more? It's going to happen regardless, no matter what. Promise you. We'll talk about that in Austin. Like, you got something original, there'll always be someone copying it. That's It's just part of it. But the ego structure would keep you from stepping forward with your brilliant new ideas out of the fear of that. Again, next, next bullet point for the diva shadow archetype. My light is so bright that that is enough for me to make a difference in the world. Hmm. We heard that one before. Or I've survived blank, some sort of trauma, and that was big enough contribution to liberate humanity. Or I've lived a long life and I just deserve to rest now. Or once everything is perfectly laid out in my reality, then I'll consider showing up to lead. So these are the ways the ego structure starts to kind of bomb us and circumvent those initial first like steps, those fiery first steps that we take towards our leadership, the moment we take, we start to step towards where we really need to be fulfilling our divine purpose, the ego structure will try to take us out like a special forces unit. <laughs> and, um, and so we talk a lot about that. And then, uh, I mean, there's a whole realm of teachings here. And then in the Stargate 2 curriculum about the diva and the orphan arena, the orphan has is when the ego structure starts to say, I am not important enough for this. So the ego structure is a pendulum that goes back and forth between the diva and the orphan that would keep you from stepping into your leadership. Now, as we began today's transmission with Mary Magdalene's reading from the Sophia Code, she recognized that it was constant training with her, with her master teachers 
that kept her in alignment with where she needed to go in her future. That even with all of her early childhood training, that she needed to stay within that space of keeping her feet to the fire, staying inspired, staying in connection with her mentors, such as Mother Mary, that would help her invest in herself and to be ready for when her mission was about to you know, really open up for her. So someone like Mary Magdalene, are you kidding me? She could have totally stepped into that diva shadow archetype. Like she was so brilliant. She was so psychic. She was already praying and meditating and making such an impact in that way. But she didn't hide out in the diva arena. She had every, I mean, she even looked like a diva I and mean, she was gorgeous and wealthy and, you know, covered in jewelry. What did she do? She she chose to join in a scene monastic order where all the jewelry came off and, you know, her clothing became very subtle and she spent hours upon hours training in, in a disciplinary environment that really focused on it wasn't a luxurious situation it was a very much a hermetic lifestyle you know although it was in community and a monastic lifestyle is the best way to say it and she gave up all of that so that she could focus on her leadership if somebody as fabulous as magdalene isn't going to give in to the diva arena why should we right so the other arena that can come up that the ego structure can, you know, <laughs> grenade us with is called the orphan arena. It's the orphan shadow archetype. And the orphan shadow archetype is when the ego structure tells you that you are not important enough for your leadership, for the calling of your leadership within you. So some of these bullet point examples would be like, <laughs> it says your ego special forces will do just about anything to convince you of who do I think I am? I'm not qualified enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not good looking enough. I'm not articulate enough. I'm not talented enough. I'm not brave enough. I'm not important enough. Isn't this interesting? Or there are other people who can create this better than me, so I don't need to do this. Or someone else will always be better than me at fill in the blank, so now I'm off the hook. Or I don't know enough about business, money, marketing, career choices, this fill in the blank. And it's too hard to learn something new at this point in my life. Anyways, ooh, the ego structure is so tricky. Isn't this so interesting? Or how about this one? I hear this one a lot from leaders or people that should be leading. <laughs> I can't stand learning new technology. I can't, it's too scary to learn a new career role or the growth curve of a new education to support my creative calling. So I guess I'm just stuck with my lot. Whew. Or I'm too young and inexperienced to create something of value or to lead, or I'm too old and tired to create something of value and to lead. Oh my gosh, talk about putting our feet to the fire. The Stargate 2 curriculum is so confronting and activating. And the journaling prompts are going to blow your mind. They're going to take you to the very root of where your ego structure is giving you a super hard time and help you move beyond the old resistances, the old fears uh, that have held you back from, from saying yes to taking those next steps of exploring your leadership, ex uh, embracing that expansion and believing in yourself. Because here's what happens when you get off of the pendulum ego's <clears throat> the ego's pendulum swing of the diva and the orphan. You come back into alignment with your higher self. You come back into the center that everyone is here to lead. Everyone has something significant to contribute. Everyone has a very important role to play through sovereign leadership. Sovereign leadership isn't about hierarchy. Sovereign leadership is about co-creation at its best. Sovereign co-creation at its best, where we step outside of the paradigm of codependency and hierarchy, and we step into um, the playground of what it means that your divine purpose, your creations, your ability to bring light and wisdom and healing and teaching and guidance perfectly intersects and overlaps with everyone else's purpose. 
I mean, I just, my whole heart feels like it's opening just when I share that. It feels so good. Like I feel my wings unfurling in joy that this is the kind of angelic, co-creative, sovereign paradigm leadership that's being invoked in these extreme times uh, that are so confusing to the collective consciousness of humanity, but not confusing for us because Mary, Mother Mary and Mary Magdalene repeat again and again that the dark, the dark times that we are living in are actually invoking uh, the most powerful embodiment of these divine feminine and divine masculine Christ principles working together as one within us as sovereign whole embodiments of divinity having a human experience. So I know that was a lot of information to read and to take in. How is it landing for you? Have you experienced the diva or the or the orphan archetype? Feel free to share in the chat if you have any questions about this. I'm happy to answer your questions. <laughs> Deviant's writing in. Let's do this together. Co-creating heaven on earth. I love that so much. Um, Safia is sharing, I can feel that heart, heart opening as well. And uh, Chelsea, who's one of our Sophia Circle leaders, is sharing collaboration over competition. Yes. Um, Kelly is sharing, yes. This is so helpful. Thank you, Kyra. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. Uh, Uni is sharing, yes, the orphan archetype. Uh, oh, great. Thank you for your honesty and sharing uh, which archetype has been coming up for you. Taryn, who is one of our team angels, is sharing. I've had so much of both of these archetypes come up for me yesterday when I was journaling and my completion from my Sophia Circle leadership training. Yes, Taryn! Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. You're going to be the best Sophia Circle leader, Taryn. That's such great news to hear that you are really resourcing that Stargate 2 curriculum as you are finishing up your certification journey. Um, Yes, Monique is sharing, add motherhood to the equation and the ego has a lot of material to work with for self-sabotage. That's so interesting, Monique. That was the next bullet point. I'm so glad that you shared that. The next bullet point, because there's more, I just didn't read all of them, was I'm too busy with parenting or caretaking, fill in the blank, to create something that is calling me into my greatness. I'll raise and care for the greatness of my children you know, elders fill in the blank instead. I love that you picked up on that, Monique. That is powerful, wonderful intuition. So, um, wow, this, yeah, the rooster concurs. I feel for somebody wrote in the best name for that rooster uh, in the YouTube live feed, and that I can't remember the name. So, if you've got a name for this rooster, we got to name this rooster because he's clearly part of our team <laughs> in the year of the dragons. Dragon and rooster actually go to, together really well in Chinese astrology. Oh, he loves it. <laughs> so, anyways, it's oh, Trister the rooster. Yes, I love that name. That's so great. Caruso, the rooster. I love that. Oh my God. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me live today for our KR Daily Transmission. Let's just take a moment in closing together, welcoming in Mary Magdalene, Jesus, the entire order of Magdalena. They're laughing at the rooster as well. Trooster, the rooster. Oh my gosh. And just feeling that fiery Aries new moon feeling the freedom that all of these planets that are acting as learning experience guideposts in the skies, the stars are aligning for us to focus on leadership in a profound new way this month, opening the wings of our heart, opening uh, our body, hearts, and minds, the blessings of all of the Magdalene's, Joan of Arc, Mary Magdalene, Jesus, feeling their loving embrace, knowing that we are held as we become wise as serpents and gentle as doves, first with our, with our own hearts and with others, as we embody that discernment of when we can identify the ego structure swinging between the diva and the orphan so that we can get off of that pendulum and get inside our daily higher self embodiment. That's that, you know, daily chop wood, carry water, um, passionate embodiment of showing up to our leadership day to day. That that is where the diamond gets polished. That is where you get to experience the light of your higher self 
through your daily decisions to show up to lead and to serve in your moment by moment reality, which leads to greater and greater expansion. And so we welcome the Magdalene's blessing you as a Magdalene, as a, a living angel on earth, as a part of the order, this earth angel order that has come to birth a new sovereign paradigm. It's an honor and a privilege to be here with you. Thank you for liking this video. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. Thank you for your beautiful uh, comments and reflections in the chat. Please feel free to share in the video replay comments as well. Thank you for sharing these videos. Thank you for letting people know about the Sophia Code movement. How many tools, how many uh, activations, initiations that we offer in our mystery school. We've been channeling this work for over six years in preparation for the very times that we are living in. There's such a wealth of resources and it's such our great pleasure to be able to share that with you and to support you in your ascension journey and your leadership and in your higher self embodiment. Again, feel free to reach out to us at kairaw.com if you need to speak with one of our team angels. Um, and I look forward to seeing you at the Magdalene Rise ceremony and live in Austin for our step up to the mic sessions um, we're, for our, our fire dragon ceremonies. We're going to be doing literal fire ceremonies and there's just going to be such a riveting community dialogue on what it takes to lead through sovereignty as business owners, um, as leaders in, in our respective fields, and the underbelly of leadership and what it takes to navigate that underbelly, navigate both our own ego structure, but also the ego structure of community, the ego structure of the collective, the ego structure of individual clients. Like We can learn how to navigate that wily e. coyote ego structure in beautiful, fiercely graceful, loving ways that brings enlightenment and uh, expansion to even the, even the most traumatized souls. It is possible, and it is exactly why we're here as the Magdalene rising that we are. I love you all so much. Namaste. Thank you for being here today. Have a beautiful, blessed day or evening, wherever you are. All my love to you always.